So we're learning a lot about onboarding. So we're going to be giving a presentation um, at the Enterprise University on the, on the employee lifecycle that starts with what's your HR strategy, outreaching to the community, then you do recruiting, and then you do onboarding, and then you do development, engagement, performance management, offboarding, and alumni. Today we're going to talk about onboarding, but what you're going to find out is onboarding is at the beginning of this chain. It's like dominoes. And when you mess up here, the dominoes may even fall all the way. A lot of people are going to leave right in the first 30, 60, 90 days. So there's a lot of clarity people ask about onboarding versus orientation. And the most important thing about onboarding, and the difference is onboarding is about bringing a person into a company to make him or her productive in their job and department. Where orientation tells you about the company, it's more of a one-time event. It's important that in the onboarding process that the person has a good first impression, like we said, and it doesn't get any better. So why does onboarding help engagement? Just imagine if every employee came to work every day, excited about their job, motivated, they acted and thought like an owner. Wouldn't that be great? Well, why don't they do that? Do we hire disengaged people? No. Something happens, and it usually starts in the recruiting process, and if it doesn't get caught there, then you tick people off in the onboarding process. Two definitions of engagement, one's by Forbes. It's the emotional commitment an employee has to an organization and its goals, resulting in the use of discretionary time, not being told what to do, but on an employee's discretionary time, they spend it thinking about improving the company. Or, by a company here in St. Louis, fifth generation, Lipics Engagement, it's when employees feel passionate about their job and committed to their job. Not just with words, but with actions. And if you take a look at a survey across 150,000 workers, only about 30% of the organizations are fully engaged. 52% are disengaged, and 18% are actively engaged. More than half the organization is not where you want them to be. And how does that impact? Highly engaged people can impact quality more, they can reduce costs more, and they can improve customer service more. So there's a direct correlation for those companies that say, I don't want to spend money improving my employees and making them more engaged, it's costing them money in the bottom line. How many people have read the book, First Break All the Rules? If you haven't read the book, go out and Google it, and you'll find these 12 questions. By Gallup, these are the 12 questions you see in employee engagement surveys. These are the 12 questions that determine how well an employee is engaged. So when we do employee engagement surveys, these are the questions that are asked. And they're pretty basic. Do I know what's expected of me at work? Do I have the tools, materials to do my job? Do I have the opportunities you best every day? Do I receive feedback? It's basic project management 101. Does someone encourage me at my work? Do my opinions count? So this is the engagement gap. If you look on the left, you start the recruiting process. And people are motivated, right? They're motivated to work for your company. They're motivated to start a new job. And then on day one, or even before day one, if you're not doing the best you can, as good as it gets, if you're not making the right first impression, if you're not communicating well, if you're not engaging them, if you're not caring, and they don't get a sense that they're important, all of a sudden that line goes down. You've got lower productivity, higher turnover, and higher absenteeism. But if you do it right, it goes up. And all those benefits we talked about, about higher service, higher productivity, higher quality, that's the engagement gap, if they're around two years. Your best employees are going to leave, but the mediocre ones or less are going to stay, and that's what you're going to be dealing with. 